Well, Singh and I, we first met, I mean, many years ago. Even when I was a young boy at 12 years old, I knew that Singh was going to be my wife because God had told me that. He showed her to me, and then he told me that it wasn't at that time. But as the years began to progress, and as we got into our teenage years, around 16, 17, that's when it became evident. And we've been together ever since. One of the things I love about Adrian is his consistency, his honesty, and how he treats his wife and his family. And I admire that so much about him, his God-given gift. Today, our topic is communication. You know, society really does not want to get married any longer. You know what? I believe they, they have a fear of marriage. And one of the things they have a fear about is engaging in one another. You know, we look at it and we teach premarital and they're talking about they have to give up themselves as far as marriage is concerned. But you know what? When I look at the scripture as, as far as Ecclesiastics 4 and 9, it says that two is better than one because we have a reward for our labor. You know what? And when you speak about that reward, I mean, when you get married and you're on that same ground for communication, you're building that foundation, you know, God really does reward that labor. You know what, when we look at it, and it's not talking about a labor, something that you will, you know, get angry about or anything like that. I'm talking about working to please one another. Working together. Unity and strength. That's where we're going to gain our unity and our strength from. And one of the things that I look at, about, look at is me pleasing you. Well, you know what, you do such a great job of that. A few things about what I just love about Senya is that she's just so genuine. She's loving, she cares for her family, she cares for her husband and her children, and she's just a wonderful person. She's a God's spirit woman, and she takes the time to listen to God as it pertains to life and her family. You know what's saying about communication when you talk about that? I think about the scripture, Proverbs 18. 18 and 22 says, he who finds the wife finds the good thing and finds the favor of the Lord. So you're telling me that you have found your favor? You, you know, found a good thing in me? I found a good thing in you, and also I've gotten my favor as well. Everyone is always looking for favor, but the favor is right here, right here with my wife. You know, we talk about that, and one of the things that we share with many, many couples is everything that you need is standing right before you, is standing by your side here to support you, to help you, to communicate, to pull the best out of you. So I'm very grateful to have you. I knew Adrian was a gift for me, and I knew that he was the right husband for me is when the Lord spoke to me so clearly, and I heard the Lord's voice say, Adrian is a gift. Don't break his heart. So, and I know, and he's been that every since day one. Well, you know what, thing I tell you, really, to tell you the truth, dealing with uh, communication, communication has been a great topic, and as we look at communication and the importance of communication, we just need to understand for couples that you need to be open. Number one, you need to be open, we need to be not judgmental to one another, but we just simply need to be able to flow with communication and allow each other to speak. Honey, that was one of the things that, uh, as far as when we first started off with marriage, mm -hmm. was having an open communication. We were able to say whatever we needed to say, uh, as long as we respected one another. Yeah, that was the key, yeah, is, is keeping respect in it so then therefore we don't feel like we're being judgmental to one another or correcting each other, giving them the freedom to speak. Giving them the freedom to speak, and not only that, you know, having a heart to, to know each other's heart mm -hmm. and to be sensitive to those areas. And even when we're open with one another, we have to be mindful 
that we don't step over one another, over talk one another, but have that soft tone to where we're able to respect one another. I know when I reach this boiling point when he becomes agitated because one thing I've realized in Proverbs 15, one, that, that is one of my favorite scriptures. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stirreth up anger. So I know just to be quiet and keep my mouth closed and pray and trust God. Well, you know what, that was interesting that you said as far as over-talking one another because typically when you're in a conversation, what is a conversation? A conversation is, as I talk to you, then you're going to respond to me. And if there is just a one-way dialogue, then that's not a conversation. But honey, even in that responding, you have, we have to be careful that we know what to say and when to say it and that we don't come off offensively, but that we respect each other and what each other have to say. Well, one thing too also that you need to um, understand is you use the word offensive. So when you're talking about being offensive, then in a day, you could be offensive to your spouse. I could be offensive to you, you could be offensive to me, but we have to train ourselves at in the evening time, we need to look at each other, check each other out, and ask the question, have we offended one another? And if so, it's okay to say, I apologize. Would you please forgive me? Because that's a part of the communication. It's a part of communication also. It's a part to where you have to uh, know what to communicate about. You know, you just can't just blurt off anything off the top of your head and, or say anything that you want to say. You have to think twice and speak once. You know, my grandmother taught me how to yeah, say Yeah, yeah, right. And I believe that's why we're married 25 years later. You know, communication is very important within a marriage. And I remember with me and my wife, we actually stated at the beginning of our union that we had to have open communication. Open communication was a must, and I'm telling you that you need to have open communication because simply, you are not God. You do not know what's on your wife's mind. You don't know what's on her heart. She doesn't know what's on your mind. She can't read your mind simply because she is not God. So therefore, there, you have to eliminate the boundaries. Eliminate those boundaries so that you can talk about any subject. And as you're talking about those particular subjects, you'll see that your communication will actually get very, very wholesome. So I'm telling you now, open communication is the key. Yeah, that's important. I know even as we're teaching uh, in many workshops and what have you, we talk about uh, think twice and speak, speak once. once. Meaning that you need to think about what you're going to say. And Correct. you said that, dealing with understanding what is the, is it the time? You know, is the environment right? Because some topics that you have to talk about within a marriage, sometimes it's not the right time. So you really have to make sure that we've set the mood, that you set the atmosphere, so that when the conversation comes up, then the Holy Spirit can really be within that conversation. And even with dealing with the Holy Spirit, as far as communicating, communication is allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through you. Okay, so if you're saying that, then the only way that that's going to happen is that as a married couple, we need to pray about some things. Sometimes if we know that we're going to engage in a uh, deep conversation or some critical conversation that may be an issue within our union, we may need to take time and pray about that so we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit into that conversation so then we know, matter of fact, that it is going to be a great, wholesome conversation. So when we're thinking about over 20 years of marriage, you know what, many couples have had to communicate with one another and they've really had to deal with some very, very critical issues. So it comes down to communication, number one, is key in a union. 
you have to be very, very open in your communication, you know, setting the boundaries, but yet having respect for one another in that time of communication. And I tell you, you will have a successful union. So you know what, sing it. Hey, we're gonna go to uh, next week. We hopefully that you will join us next week as we have our uh, conversation and our topic. Uh, it's gonna be a very exciting topic yes. next week. So we want you to come back and join us. And you know what, we'll see you next time on the, the truth, truth about, about marriage. marriage.